The idea for this video was, well, actually it wasn't an idea. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I was going to make a simple Instagram banner, square, thousand pixels by thousand pixels, thanking people for 1 million views on YouTube. It's taken me a little over a year and a half to get there, but it's been steady growth along the way. But then I thought, why don't you make a video thank you rather than a banner thank you? And then I thought to myself, well, actually, why don't you try and add some value to the fact that you've got a million views? And rather than just thanking people, which is obviously great, but it's kind of a pointless video, isn't it? Maybe actually give some tips that you've figured out along the way to getting a million views. So the purpose of this video, first of all, is to thank anyone that's ever watched my videos for watching them. I didn't ever intend on becoming a YouTuber in any kind of way, but I kind of fell into it through lockdown and I've just enjoyed it and taken it and ran with it really. So I'm incredibly grateful for anyone that watches my video, anyone that subscribes. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can get to a million views on YouTube in less than two years. That's exactly what I've done and it's exactly what I think you can do if you follow some of the tips in this video. It's going to be a blend of practical tips and just general advice as well. But watch the video to the end here because these tips are quite important. I'm not going to do the normal things where I say, oh, make good thumbnails or your titles need to be catchy and they need to be 50 characters. It's not going to be like that. This is stuff that probably people won't have told you before. If you want to get involved in discussions about content creation, streaming, YouTube, all that kind of stuff, jump into my Discord. The link will be in the description below. Let's go. So tip number one on how to get a million views on YouTube is to focus on improving. And I'll be really quite specific here. When I talk about improvement, you have to have the mentality that your videos and your content is going to start badly and it will get better over time. I look back on my first videos, they're cringy as hell, but they exist and many of them are still getting lots of views even now. You've got to go through the process of making those crappy videos for them to get better over time. But if you have the mentality that your next video is always going to be better than the last over the course of a long period of time your youtube videos will get better and your content will get better you will get more views you'll get more likes you'll get more subscribers and all the stuff that comes with growth there are many different ways that you can improve with your content and it's not just about making good videos all of that is obviously quite a big part of it you need to have the mentality to be improving over a longer period of time because this isn't something that's going to happen overnight it can take one year two years it can take five years and many people that have been creating content some of the biggest creators out there still say that they're nowhere near as good as they want to be at the content that they make and this is often when they've got teams of people helping them do it so i would focus on thumbnails but rather than just saying make good thumbnails actually learn photoshop learn the different techniques and skills involved in making a good thumbnail a catchy thumbnail learn how to present if you're streaming maybe try streaming a little bit more you may not enjoy those streams as much but the presenting that you get and the experience you get from presenting will help your youtube videos and it'll help your content be more successful you'll be more confident in front of the camera and you'll enjoy it a lot more in the process do endeavor to improve and try different editing techniques with your youtube videos when i first started i I just specifically put off doing colorizations in my video. I would never do any kind of color correction. And I also didn't do any audio correction. And there's a load of stuff that I just didn't do. But what I did do is try different transitions and I tried new text styles. And then I started to bring in a little bit of animation. So I just tried to bring in new things, layering and layering all the time, rather than trying to do like 50 different things all at once to try and improve the content from day one. For me, that was a good approach because it allowed me to just make slightly better videos over a longer period of time rather than just make perfect videos from day one. So make sure you work on your video title screens, make sure you work on your branding and make sure you work on your gear and your hardware as well. Obviously, that's going to be within your budget, but don't worry too much if you can't afford the most expensive things. If you've got a camera, research and learn how to make the most of that camera because there are loads of tutorials out there that can make your camera out of the box way better than what it is when it comes out of the box, right? Tip number two on how to get a million views on YouTube is to plan your content. Now, this comes in a couple of different ways. The main way is literally opening up a Word document or a notepad document and bullet pointing what you want to cover in the video. I've done this in this video. I'll show you. So I've planned the title. I've planned the different bullet points and all the different points I want to make in this video. This serves a couple of different purposes. First of all, your video is likely to be more logical and flow better. You're more likely to keep it within the right time scale. When you read out and write down what you're planning to cover in the video, you can sort of 
stop yourself from putting stupid things in the video and you also actively think of different things that you need to put in the video that you may not have covered if you were just doing it on the fly if you turn up turn the microphone on and press record on the camera and you just start talking yeah okay you might get some views from that but there's going to be so much that you miss so much that you don't focus on not only that as well but if you actually write it all down and you have the bullet points and you do a little bit of planning what happens is your takes are a lot lower so rather than let's say having 20 or 30 minutes of raw footage to edit you've got like maybe 12 or 13 minutes of footage in to let's say an eight or nine minute video the thing about that is it then saves you a lot of time and it means you can get more content out because you're not editing twice as much footage so just five or ten minutes doing a little bit of planning can make a huge huge difference i think it is a good idea to take some inspiration from other creators but always make sure that you credit people where you've directly taken an idea from them but always also make sure that you try and improve on what they have done there's no point in just copying someone else inspiration is one thing Plagiarism is a total another thing. You need to do things better and try and think differently on how you're going to do it. And the way that you do that is through the planning process and trying to think creatively. Tip number three on how to get a million views on YouTube is to use a project planning tool like Trello to log all of your video ideas. Trello is a free tool, but there are loads of different tools like it, Slack, and yeah, there's loads of others. I'll try and list a couple of them below. Video ideas can come to you in any real format. You might be in the bath, you might be in bed, out and about, gaming, streaming. It can happen at any time. You get a really good idea and you want to make sure that you're not losing those ideas. You don't want to be like trying to rack your brain like, oh, what was that great video idea that somebody talked to me about and gave me and then you've forgotten it and all of a sudden it's gone and it waters down the overall quality of your ideas and your creativity having trello just allows you to do it a little bit more brainlessly you have an idea you dump it there you can forget about it and then at a later stage you can come back to that trello board open it up and you see all your ideas there you can pick the idea that you want to run with this serves a couple of different purposes first of all it means you're not having to think about new ideas all the time but when you do think about them they're getting logged so that then means when you're not having a very creative day you can just open up trello and look at the ideas and pick one of them that means you're not having to be as creative in the moment which serves another good purpose if you come up with a video idea let's say today and let's say whatever that idea is you then fester on that idea for weeks or even months what that means is you're constantly thinking about the different ideas that you've had and you can see them in trello and you're thinking about the best way to do those ideas what that then means is rather than just thinking of an idea on the spot and creating it on the spot you're more likely to do things better because your YouTube videos will be well thought out and well planned and your brain will have been figuring out the content ideas for a longer period of time before you actually come to the table, come to the camera and make the content. Honestly, setting up Trello for your YouTube videos is such an easy thing to do. I've been doing this from the very start. I've got like 200 video ideas stacked up. I'm never going to run out of content ideas and it's because I've got the list of them. Tip number four on how to get a million views on YouTube is to use the right tools to create your videos now what i'm referring to here is music i'm referring to b-roll footage i'm referring to graphical and titles and all those types of things you may not be the best graphic designer you may not be the best branding person you may not be great at animation but that actually doesn't matter you can log into something like envato elements and there are other free versions of content platforms available and just pick up free b-roll you can pay to get more premium b-rolls as well and these video elements that you add into your video they just make it a lot more visually appealing you're not having to go out and film these things yourself the same goes for the animations and the titles and stuff like that you don't have to be good at doing those things yourself to be able to add them into your video i honestly probably went something like six or 12 months before i even added a single animated title to my stream and i went out and i got custom made animations and they still weren't as good as the ones that were out there already in the templates music is a really interesting part of the creative process the mood that you're in can reflect the mood that you sort of impose on the viewers so using something like epidemic sounds you can cherry pick the mood or the genre or even the length and pace of the soundtrack to add to your music and then the rest is just about adjusting the volume and reducing the volume at the right times to create those intense or awesome moments within the video using the right tools extends beyond just that creative process as well you can use things like fiverr as inspiration as well 
I used Fiverr to get my logo as an example because I'm okay at branding stuff, but I'm not great at designing. So I went to Fiverr and got some inspiration. And between my ideas and the person that created my logos and branding, I was able to come up with a branding that I was happy with, but I wasn't relying on just my own skills and just my own ideas. Tip number five on how to get a million views on YouTube is to become more discoverable. You need to understand or try to understand and learn about search engine optimization. YouTube ultimately is a algorithm. It responds to different factors and different metrics that will push content up and expose it or suppress content if it's not very good. The more you understand that algorithm, the better off you're going to be and the more that your channel and views and subscribers will grow. There are a few key things that you've got to bear in mind when you're thinking about search engine optimization for YouTube. First of all, timestamps. Obviously, timestamps are now included in the Google algorithm. So if someone searches for a specific term that's only one small part of your video, your video can still be discovered as long as you've put the timestamps in there. Now, YouTube have gone further lately to actually include automatic timestamps and you can enable that. But I would recommend actually you yourself specifically trying to target search terms that you know are relevant to your content and timestamping those particular sections. I will always put at least seven or eight different timestamps for search terms that I know that people are going to be looking for, but it has to be relevant to the content. But I will always put those timestamps in. I, I regard it as a really important part of the process in terms of the quality of my video being delivered. Timestamps can mean that a video becomes a lot more searchable and discovered by a lot more people. You then get exposed to a lot more views. And if you get exposed to more views, you're going to get exposed to more subscribers. Now, I'm not going to talk about niches and all the rest of it, because people always say, oh, you need to niche down and all that kind of stuff. Do whatever the other people say you need to do on that. I've chosen three or four different niches that have worked for me, but I've also changed that over time as well. So I'm not really going to talk too much about that. If you're going to get the million views that you're hoping to get, you need to speak the words that you want people to find. That sounds like a really bizarre thing to say, but if you're wanting the algorithm to push your content based on the things that you're saying to the camera it makes sense that the the actual words that you're saying is relevant to the content that you're trying to deliver and i'll tell you why this is important google indexes all of the text that you speech using the speech recognition tools so for every video that you post there'll be a text transcript against it if you're not talking and saying the keywords about the things that you're trying to push youtube simply won't recommend you for that content so you could write the stuff in the title you could even write it in your description but unless you're actually speaking the words that you want to target then you may not actually get as much discoverability as you want with that in mind the planning that we mentioned earlier in tip two planning your videos is actually quite important because you can start to plan some of the keywords that you speak and also some of the keywords that you put into the search engine optimization final bonus tip from me on how to get a million views on youtube is to have fun it's really important important that you have fun while you're doing the creative process. If you find that you're not having fun whilst learning, whilst planning, whilst editing, whilst doing the whole process, it's probably not for you or you maybe just need to try and do things a little bit differently. If you're going to do this for a long time and trust me, you're going to be incredibly lucky if you get success in let's say a three to six month period of time. It very much is a marathon, not a sprint and it's better to try and enjoy that process. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and good luck with your YouTube endeavors. I wish you all the best and thanks again for 1 million views.